So we're going to take a look at tempo matching in Pro Tools. There's three main methods that we can use to tempo match, which is taking an audio file and determining what its tempo is and matching Pro Tools tempo to it. I have beat one here at the top. I'm going to solo it. I'm going to resize the track, fit to window. I'm making sure that I have smart the smart tool on. I also have to make sure that my edit functions are selected. So this is what I've got. Now I'm going to go back to the beginning. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see. I'm going to have a listen to what we've got. I'm going to use the down arrow to select while playing the insert point. I'm going to use the up arrow on the out point while playing. So here's what we've got. One, two, three, four, two, two, ready, and in, two, three, four, one, two, ready, and out. So then my in points and out points aren't going to work unless, which you've got them here, unless you actually have your song position line or your cursor inside of the Pro Tools uh, audio file. So let me show that again. If I press play, down arrow, up arrow, down arrow, up arrow, there's, it's making a selection of course there. So I'm just going to make the selection for the two bars. We have to make sure that this two bar section is correct and it will loop. To make it loop on your transport you can control click or you could go Shift Command L, which turns your loop on and off. We want to make sure that we're looping. I'm going to press the left arrow to go to the beginning of my edit, zoom in. That edit point uh, may require us to move things around. Let's see the end point. Oh, not very accurate. A shift click. I'm going to go over. It's very difficult with a small amount of information here. What I want is to find a transient, and this is just. Uh, usually you want a zero crossing on your edits. This is just to tempo match. It's a little bit different. So I'm using this peak that we see right here. I'm selecting it so that I can find the equivalent peak over here, which is right up there. And that should give us a one bar loop. It's giving me a reference point. The reason I don't have a zero crossing edit is that this is tempo matching, not trying to make edit that would use in a musical sense. So I've got the beginning point, the end point. I'm going to take a listen to make sure that this is indeed a two bar loop. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. Okay, so my loop is not working for me. Let's see that we actually have that loop. Now it should work. One, two, three, four. Perfect, so we got a nice loop. I'm going to create an edit. I create the edit by pressing Command E. E for edit. Command E. It creates an edit. Now, to tempo match, what we have to do is bring this back to the beginning of our song. So here's what I'm going to do is Shift Command and create a new track. That's stereo. It must be stereo. You can't import a mono or a stereo track into a mono track. Uh, so I'm going to take my grabber tool, which is a smart tool already. I'm going to bring this down to the beginning. There we go. I'm going to make sure that I'm in the right mode, which is slip mode. Now that I have these two tracks selected, I'm selecting beat one and audio one. I can bring them both into the window by shift option plus fit to window. That brings the two of them together. I'm turning off the solo on the first one, I'm going to only solo the bottom one, so this is my tempo matching. So what we have is we're starting at measure one. And we're two measures long, so measure one plus two measures equals the end of this waveform must be measure three. Right now, this waveform is running faster than Pro Tools because Pro Tools takes longer to get to measure three. So what I want to do is take measure three and line it up with the end of this section here. So you will need your transport for this. You bring up your transport by pressing Control. Oh, pardon me, not control, command number pad one. So to bring up the transport, command number pad one. So I'm going to take off the conductor track and then move the audio file up top so we can see. And we want this number three, measure three, to line up with the end of it so we can just adjust the tempo accordingly. You can see as soon as I move this, you can see the lines, bars, and beats moving. And we can get approximately, oh, went too far. I'll have to go with my finger. So it's 142 and change. So I'm going to reselect my waveform, zoom in, make sure I'm at that edit point. 
you can see we're just a little bit shy, so I have to do a decimal point. At this point, I'm going to say decimal 2. That's very close. Decimal 2, 5. It's probably pretty much bang on. So that's our tempo. Tempo matching using the first method. And this works in any DAW. It's not a Pro Tools specific thing. If you take a section, one bar, two bars, three bars, whatever, move it to the beginning of your song, adjust the tempo so that it matches to the end of that uh, region, uh, you're going to get a fairly accurate tempo. Method number two. So this is uh, the second method of finding tempo in Pro Tools. This works best for um, finding the tempo if you're recording in the studio situation. So this is tap tempo. To tap tempo, we must make sure that uh, we have the conductor track off and we have selected any part inside the meter. You have to select inside of here. If you don't select inside of there, as soon as you press T for tap tempo, you're going to change the waveform height usually. So I'm going to press play and press T in time with the tempo. So spacebar for play and then T. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Pressing T every time I hear a beat. T, T, T. So you can see, uh, the problem with tap to tempo is that it's only accurate within you know non-decimal placement areas, and it's also only within one or two beats per minute, more likely three or four beats per minute. So it's great at finding a reference point for tempo, but it's not great for lining it up exactly. The third method for finding tempo in Pro Tools is to do the following. We have to go back and still create our one bar or two bar loop. So I'm going to do that by selecting this waveform. I'm going to do the same thing as before. I'm going to press play. I'm going to use the down arrows for in, up arrows for out. So one, two, three, four, two, two, ready, and in, two, three, four, two, two, ready, and out. So then it's made that selection. Now, one of the problems I have is that I did not select inside the waveform first. So then I have this wonderful loop pattern up top here, but I haven't put that loop down or my edit part down here. So here's a little trick. If you turn on keyboard focus over here, now I can use the L, P, semicolon, and comma buttons as up, down, forward, and back. So I'm going to use the uh, semicolon for down, and there you go. It's just selected that waveform as it was, so I'm not losing my edit. Pressing left arrow, zooming in, using command brackets, I can see approximately where my edit needs to be. It needs to be around here start of that transient. I'm going to go to the other section, the tail section of my edit by pressing a right arrow. Resizing this, let's see, I'm going to move my transport out of the way. I don't have a number pad so I need to leave it on for the time being. I'm just going to choose an arbitrary uh, section. That is the first zero crossing that I see before uh, the waveform ramps up. So then let's do the same thing on the other side. First zero crossing before the waveform ramps up will be right about there. Let's just zoom in to ensure that is correct. There we go. That should be my loop points. And I can press play in one, two, three, four, one, two, ready. And perfect loop every time. So we've got the perfect loop. Looping or finding the tempo only works if the audio source that you're using has been recorded to a metronome, and specifically a computer metronome, not one of those 9-volt uh, battery type things. Uh, they tend to drift in time based on the voltage of the battery. So I've got my edit. I edit points. I want to press Command-E for edit. It's easy to do an edit with Command-E. I think about it that way. I'm going to Option fit to window all these tracks there. I'm going to remove the previous audio that I had. I'm going to Option drag this up in the window. I'm going to resize this so that you can see it, fit to window. There you go, I'm going to zoom in. Now, this isn't that bad, the tempo's only off by a little bit, but let me show you an easier method of uh, creating that tempo. I'm going to turn the conductor track back on, and then with the conductor track on, I must select just my region. I have to make sure that the region is selected. So you saw that when I turned the conductor track on and off, it changed the 
actual selection that I have. Now I do Command I, and Command I determines my in point and my out point. So I'm saying I'm starting at measure one, this is why we moved it to measure one, and the end point is measure three. So there we go, in at one, out at three. It doesn't, your loop might be different. Yours might be one bar long, yours could be 16 bars long. All you do is choose the in and out points at that point. Now this has changed the tempo, and it's made the tempo 121.121 121 or whatever. Uh, it's made it much more accurate than I possibly could do myself, and a lot quicker. If I move this file and you'd moved it up, then you just have a short section and you did the same thing. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And you didn't put your loop in the right spot, and you did Command I. You're going to get uh, starting there, uh, let's say I started at 1, ended at 3, just like I knew before. But watch, the reference point is here. As soon as I press OK, what we're getting is negative bars. Negative 1, 2, 3. If I zoom in, you'll see them. 0, negative 1, 2, and 3. What it's saying is that you wanted to assign this waveform that you have to begin at measure 1. So then now you have negatives. This is a great way to create uh, a count in if you want your song to actually start at measure 1. But for most people, that would be an error. You can correct that by moving your waveform to the beginning of your song, starting at 0 time, and then doing Command I again and selecting measure 1, measure 3, and then it corrects your timeline up top. Those are your three basic methods of uh, tempo matching in Pro Tools. That is, uh, you can cut a two-bar section, bring it to the beginning, and just uh, open up your tempo until the timeline matches up to the end of that. Tap tempo, and then Command I.